تلك آيات الكتاب المبين السلام عليكم and welcome to another session of great stories our today's story takes place in the town of Antakya long long ago in this town of Antakya lived a nice man the rest of the town prayed to idols but he was the only one who didn't pray to idols instead he seek help from Allah this man made his living by selling cloth he had a small shop in the middle of the town he was quite a hard working man every night he would weave cloth and in the morning he sold it at his shop he weaved the finest cloth so people from all over the town came to his shop they liked the man for the fine job he did making cloth but they disliked him for believing in Allah the man didn't mind that he would say oh I don't mind people cursing me or even being rude to me I will go on telling them about Allah so every time someone came to purchase some clothes the man talked about Allah he had his own way of conversation no matter what topic you discussed with him in a while he would definitely bring it to where he would say uh, now you see that's why I was telling you to stop praying to idols or he would go ah that makes sense now this shows that only Allah can help us and so on and so forth well the mayor of the town couldn't bear him for too long one day he sent the police chief to him who said well I am here to inform you of new law that now have uh, we have in this town uh, you can't talk about Allah any longer the man replied but that's not fair I mean talking about Allah doesn't hurt anybody the police chief didn't pay any attention well you know the law now so make sure you don't utter a word about Allah anymore the man was a good peace-loving citizen of the town so he didn't want to break the law in any way so he decided to take his business out of the city the next day people came to his shop and found him packing his things why what are you doing they asked I am shifting he replied but where to and why the man told them all about the new law people were sad to hear that they didn't believe in Allah but they didn't think that not allowing the man to speak was a good idea either well we don't mind you talking to us about Allah I mean, I mean you don't hurt us and we have seen that you are a nice man they all went to the police chief is the mayor he replied the mayor doesn't like anybody talking about Allah in the city of Antakya so the people went to the mayor but the mayor was in no mood to listen look 
The city of Antakya is a famous place. We have nice places around here, and people from many parts of the world come over to visit this beautiful city. This man will bring a bad name to us. People will stop coming here if they find out that we talk about Allah in the city of Antakya. And that would mean loss of business for our city. Oh, with that he told the people to leave. The man went right outside the city limits. There he settled his shop. Now there were less number of customers. But the man was happy. At least he could talk about Allah without any fear. He had less weaving to do at night as well. So he had more time to pray his Salat for Allah. Everything was nice and smooth. But he had only one problem. He didn't have any friends. Since he was the only man who believed in Allah, people didn't want to be his friend. They enjoyed doing business with him. But they didn't like to stay and have a long conversation with him. One day, from the window of his little shop, on the top of the hill, he saw two men at the city gate. A loss of people, including the mayor and the police chief, were there as well. The man could tell that they were busy arguing with the two strangers. Out of curiosity, the man closed his shop and came down to see what was going on. He heard the mayor saying, Look, we have a rule. We don't allow anybody in this city who believe in Allah. The two men seemed a bit upset. But why not? We will not hurt anybody, and we won't cause any harm. We just want the people to know about Allah. The argument went on and on. The man listened to it carefully. Now there was a crowd gathered. The mayor realized that people are developing a sympathy for the two strangers. He didn't like that. Look, enough is enough. I won't let you in the city, he announced. Very well then, we will stay right here and talk to people entering or leaving the city. And that way we won't break any law. The mayor didn't like the idea. I won't let you do that either, the mayor said. People looked at the mayor. They really felt that mayor was being too impolite to two men. But they didn't say anything. The man looked at the people. He couldn't believe that nobody had the guts to say anything. He spoke up. People, people, what's wrong with you all? Don't you see how wrong our mayor is? Why can't these two gentlemen can stay at the city gate? Would someone please speak up? The mayor didn't like the man making a speech to the people. He came over to the man, grabbed him from his collar and said, You stay out of this 
and better keep your mouth shut. He gave two strong jerks to the man to scare him. But the man wouldn't give up. He ignored the mayor and said to the people, I, I beg you all, listen to these men. They are telling you something good. The mayor kicked the man in his belly and threw him down. Oh, so now I get it. It's you who has invited these two men to our town. You filthy human being, kill him. He ordered the police chief. And with that, the police chief started beating the man real hard. The two visitors came close. Stop it. Please stop it. Don't kill the poor soul. Arrest him, ordered the mayor. Four policemen threw the visitors down and handcuffed them. The rest went on punching and kicking the man. The crowd watched all that happen. They really hated all that. But none had the strength to do anything. So the man died. His dead body was thrown down the hill. Allah sent his angels to bring back the soul of the man. Allah said to him, You suffered a lot for me. I will reward you for that. The man was glad to hear that. Allah said to the angels, Take him to paradise. Provide him more than he deserves. So the angels accompanied the man and took him to paradise. On their way to paradise, the man asked the angels, what does this paradise look like? The angels gave the man a really nice smile and said, It's impossible to describe paradise. Wait till you get there. The gatekeeper of the paradise invited the man in. Welcome to the paradise. It's your reward for believing in Allah. The man entered the paradise. He couldn't believe his eyes. It was a most beautiful green valley. The sun was shining. The weather was pleasant. And a nice breeze was blowing. The man smelled the nice fragrance. Of spring flowers. And said, Ah, oh, it smells so nice. He said. Then he heard the sweet songs of birds. What a song these birds are singing. He closed his eyes and started enjoying the soft music the birds of paradise were making. By God, what has happened to you, sir? He opened his eyes and saw a tall, handsome man standing near him with a towel. Who are you? The man asked. I am appointed to take care of you in the paradise. I am at your service, sir. The man said and pointed at the wounds on the man's body. The man looked at his wounds and said, Oh, I was beaten for telling people about Allah. Well, sir, 
Don't worry about anything anymore. I assure you, all your worries are over. Would you please follow me? And with that, the two men walked and came over to a stream of clear, fresh water. One shower and all your wounds will heal, sir. The servant invited the man. The man entered the stream. Its water was the most refreshing, the most delightful he had ever experienced. He looked at his body. The wounds and bruises had had disappeared. His skin looked many years younger. Not a dot of dust remained on any part of his body. He went on enjoying a good, good swim and a bath for many hours. During all that time, the servant stood by holding a towel in one hand and his new gown in the other. The man came out. That one shower made him strong and active. He dried himself and then he put on his new gown. This is amazing. What kind of fabric is this? The servant smiled and said, Well, sir, this is a special kind of silk. I'm sure you have never seen it before. It is made only for the people who come to paradise. Now, could you please follow me to your palace? The man followed his servant and said, Palace? Did, did you say palace? The servant replied, That's right, sir, your palace. Where you will live forever now. And there it is. Why, Ola? And there really was a beautiful palace. It was made entirely of a huge diamond. So it shined brilliantly. The man went running inside. The palace had many rooms and swimming pools, a zoo with pretty animals, and much, much more. It took the man many hours to visit the whole palace. During all this time, the servant kept following the man. Once the man was finished looking around the palace, the servant said, a time for your lunch, sir. The servant led the man to the dining table. The dining table had all kinds of fruits and meats and sweets. First, a drink was served. It has such a taste. The man had many glasses, and he enjoyed. Ah, every sip of it. Then he ate lots of yummy foods. He tasted every food on the table. And that was lots of fun. At the end of the meal, the servant requested him to enjoy a nice cup of tea in the garden. Oh, that was nice. The man was reclining on his cozy chair when he heard Allah talking to him. Have you enjoyed yourself? The man quickly got up and said, Yes, my Allah, I have 
immensely enjoyed myself. Good, Allah said. Now is there anything else you need? The man thought for a minute. Well, I just wish that all the people could know how happy I am in this paradise. And how well you, my Allah, has treated me. Allah said, Your desire will be fulfilled. And so Allah put the story of this man in Quran. Now Quran is the most read book in the world. Especially in Ramadan, millions of people all over the world read and listen to Quran. And there they come to know about this man who is still living happily in the paradise. End of the story. But wait, wait, we haven't told you what happened to the city people and the mayor and the police? Or did we? No, I don't think so. You know the people who killed the man? Well, here is what happened to them. The two visitors saw the city people kill the man. But unfortunately, they were handcuffed and they couldn't do anything. Before they were taken away, they said, Listen to us. Allah will curse you for what you have done. They were taken away. And then the city people got thinking, Maybe these two men are right. Maybe Allah will come with his army and attack us. So the mayor called everyone to defend their city. The city people came out prepared to fight. They dug in all around the city with their arrows and spears and swords. They waited for Allah to come for a fight. Well, let Allah send his army and we will show him the real power. The mayor went around bragging. But Allah didn't send any army. In the complete silence of midsummer afternoon, a terrible scream was heard. And it blew the brains of every living soul in the city. The scream was so powerful that the eyeballs of people popped out. Blood gushed out of their noses and ears. Their skin ruptured and they were all killed. And this is how Allah took his revenge. May Allah save us from his punishment and may Allah take us to paradise. Amen. Now to read this story yourself, go to chapter 36 of the Holy Quran until the next session of Great Stories. Assalamu Alaikum.